The following story, the following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. There's a book called As Long As I Live. This book is written by someone who is a tzaddik. It was written initially in Hebrew. They translated, I believe, in eight or ten languages so far. That's how good of a book it is. You've got to read it. Required reading, As Long As I Live. It's in the back. If you want to see it, you got to read it. You're going to stay up the whole night reading it. I forgot the name of it. He has... Uh, MS, I believe it is, or uh, MLS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And basically, the premise of the book is, he had a choice then, which is, does he just crumple up in a ball and basically let HaKadosh Baruch Hu take his neshama from his body who's badly deteriorating? Or he's like, no, every moment that I am here, I'm going to maximize and utilize what I can, as long as I live. As long as I'm here, I'm going to give him my best. I'm going to try my best. And he goes to say story after story after story of how he's given this message and it's resonated with thousands, if not by now, hundreds of thousands of people who have literally changed their life. People were sobbing. So I'm going to share with you a story that he writes in this book. He writes the following. He went to an auditorium and he usually speaks to adults. But for some reason, they didn't tell him who his audience was. And he forgot to ask, who am I speaking to? So he assumed it was to adults. He comes to the stage and he realizes it's a packed auditorium with middle school, high school boys. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10th, 11, 12th. They're kids, basically. I mean, they're young adults, but they're kids. He wasn't prepared to give remarks for that. So he's racking his brain thinking. He says, you know what? I'm going to have to adapt the class. So he, he winged it. This is amazing. He pointed to a boy in the front. I'm going to use the name. Shlaimi. Because I had his name on it. Shlaimi. Here, do you mind stepping up for a second? So Shlaimi steps up. Everyone giggles, right? Shlaimi, do me a favor. I want to ask you something. Have you ever visualized where you're going to be in 10 years from now? He says, I'm only 15. He says, no, no, no. Where are you going to be when you're 25? I have no idea. You, you don't have any idea? 25? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I guess married. All his friends are like snickering. Like, like a, it's like, I guess married. Uh, maybe some kids. Uh, where do you think you're going to live? I, I don't know. I, 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 she says, Shlami, I'm going to do a little experiment with you. And people, if you don't mind, you could follow along. But I'm just going to use Shlami as an example. Shlami, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to go really deep. And say to yourself, if I could change who I am now to get to where I want to be in 10 years from now, what do I need to do? I'm going to give you 10 seconds to think about that. It's quiet. And so you see like Shlemy, it's like almost in a trance. He's like slowly moving back and forth. He says, now Shlemy, you know where you want to go. You know what you want to do. But how are you going to get there? And you see him nodding his head. So I'll tell you how you get there. Surround yourself with people that will help you get to that goal where you need to be. Not only surround yourself with that people, I want you to envision what a goal and an achievement that you don't think you'll ever achieve in your life, what that will be. What would that be, Shlaimi? And Shlaimi suddenly opened his eyes and says, finish Shas. 15 years old. Everyone's like, finish Shas? What in the world? And what made this even... Even more embarrassing was his own Rebbe, who was in the crowd, also was like, like laughing too. Because Shlemi was not a student at all. Finish Shas? Shlemi? What? And suddenly he comes over to the boy and says, Shlemi, close your eyes again. Shlemi, we're at your chasana. You're 25 years old. We're now about to walk you to the chuppah. When suddenly, Shlemi, you give a bang on the table and say, before we go out to the chuppah, I have an announcement to make. I want to let everyone know for the past 10 years, when I was 15 years old, I accepted upon myself to learn Shas and I'm now making a Siyom Shas before we go out to my Kala. I had my first Kala, the Chatan Torah, of that of finishing Shas and now I'm greeting my physical Kala. Please let me say my final remarks on the last Mishnah and Uktzin. And with that, he starts to say the Mishnah, this person. Starts saying over the last Mishnah. And you see Shlemi actually starts wording the words that he is saying as well. 
And Shlomi starts crying. At the, so Shlomi, what do you see? He says, I see my father standing next to me. And I see my future father-in-law standing next to me. I see my grandparents, all my friends, my rabbeim, everyone. I see them all standing in front of me. I have this big gemar in front of me. It's the happiest day of my life. I can't wait. What the future will hold? A little kid, 15 years old, saying this. And suddenly, the person goes over to Shlomi and goes, like that. Shlomi wakes up. He's like, well, where am I? Shlomi, you're 15. What? You saw the despair in his face. I was in a good place. He actually visualized he was 25, about to get married. He was about to make a Zimah Shas. So Shlomi, you will be there if you take the steps you need. You got the most important and critical element, and that's you visualize your success. Now's the time, Shlemi. Surround yourself with people that could get you to your goal. And I hope everyone here does the same as well. This rabbi, a few years later, he gets a phone call. Doesn't know who it is. Yeah, hi. Is this rabbi? Yeah. I need you to come to my wedding. What? My wedding? You didn't know the person. You didn't recognize the name. Nothing. You have to come to my wedding. Make a long story short, it was that Shlemi. He invited him to come to his wedding. He walked in and he... He, obviously, he's an, he's an ill man. It's not easy for him to get around. He finally came to the wedding. He was around an hour and a half late. And people looked quite agitated. When he came there, he said, yeah, supposedly the, ch- the chatan is saying he's waiting for somebody. And suddenly, the chassan from all the way at the end, Shlomi looks at him, Rabbi, oh my gosh! He runs over and gives him a big hug. He says, okay, now we can make this see him. I was like, oh, finally. He gets up there and he says the following, 10 years ago, I was not doing well in school. It was a point in my life I wanted to literally take my life away. That's how miserable it was. I had no meaning, no purpose. People used to make fun of me. I had no clue what was going on. And you, for some reason, you pulled me up. You got to bring this. This is, this is going to be a bestseller here after you do this. Thank you so much. Here's the book. Rev. Aaron Margalit, As Long As I Live. As a, Rabbi Margalit, you got to read this book. And they have a number two. He says, Rabbi Margalit, you made me visualize this moment right now. I am here now because of you. And everyone here should know, because of this unbelievable rabbi, Rabbi Aaron over here, I am where I am right now, and the future is so bright for me, and I want to thank you. With that, I'd like to say, the last mission of Nuxin, Rabbi Aaron, won't we repeat the same words that we said 10 years ago again? And with that, they said the last mission of Nuxin together, once more. Because when you visualize, when it's a reality in your mind, nothing will stop you. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.